Once again, the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine brings you The Thirteen Nights of Halloween with Rish Outfield and Big Hanklevich. Good evening. Hey, everybody, this is Big Hanklevich. And Rish Outfield. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was a special intro for a special episode of Blossom. Yeah, today is going to be slightly different than our normal. Uh, do we have a normal for this? 13? It's going to be different than our normal 13 days of Halloween, because today we got a special treat for you. Or should I say a trick? I think the moth episode was the trick. Oh, OK. So this must be the treat then, I guess. Uh, like circus peanuts that sometimes you would get you know the candy or or those brown they're like peanut butter flavored taffies that were wrapped in the orange wrappers that you like got those for halloween you're just like oh does this really count as a treat come on man you can do better than that house down the street's giving away full candy bars (laughs) (laughs) an old lady gretchen here is giving away pennies (laughs) <laughs> seriously man anyways uh i wrote a small story for today's episode i think i mentioned it in the first episode i said oh yeah you reminded me of a drabble that i was going to write and i swear i was going to write it and i actually wrote it so we're going to share it what have you done with big anklevich <laughs> where is my friend <laughs> we're going to share it with you today it's not a true drabble because i have no idea how many words that it has in it let me check actually no Oh, this doesn't even have a word count in this program, I don't think, so maybe that won't happen. Ah, well, no word count. I'm pretty sure that's more than 100, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's, it's got to be. A, 100 words isn't enough for anything. <laughs> that's true. So, yeah, I just wrote a short story. We can call it a flash fiction. And if we were a real podcast, this would be the length of our stories every time. Yeah, that's what most podcasts do. And they're very smart, probably. That's why they're still going. And we're flagging, failing, and falling apart. And resorting to things like this 13 days of Halloween debacle. (laughs) Or you could see it that we're way, way, way more ambitious than those guys. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to move on to the story. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Date Night by B.D. Anklevich. Come on, baby. It had started out so well that it was hard to believe it could end like this. Ramona was her name, and she was gorgeous. She could have been a Victoria's Secret model, except that she was way too smart for that. Instead, she used those beautiful long legs for walking around in the science lab at Stanford brains and look she had but she also had a sparkling personality to boot he couldn't really believe his luck it had been eons since things had gone so well for him with a woman at dinner they'd hit it off so well harry carey would have called it a grand slam ah harry what a great man it had been an honor to usher him to the other side anyway ramona had never stopped smiling all throughout dinner and her smile was entrancing They'd both had enough wine that their inhibitions were down, so he'd taken her to a secluded spot that he knew, spread a blanket on the grass by some large rocks, and they'd watched the full moon rise over the mountains and cast its pale glow down on the twinkling city lights. They'd kissed, gently at first, but it soon moved on to passionate. Then it had happened. He'd been trying to pull his shirt off when his hood had slipped onto his head. With his cowl in place, his supernatural identity was revealed. Ramona had seen his true face. She'd screamed, scrambled away, and was now cringing against the rocks. His true face often had this effect on people. He wished it didn't, but it was just part of the job, what the face represented. Come on, baby. Don't fear the reaper. Don't be a 
Will you be able to fly? Don't feel the reaper. Baby, I'm your man. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Good night, folks. More cowbell. I've got a fever, and the only cure <laughs> is... Uh, so you wrote that for tonight. Yes, I did. I actually wrote it today for tonight. How about that? That's why there was some awkward phrasing that we had to uh, adjust as we read it. <laughs> oh. And there's probably some other awkward phrasing that remained in the story. I will see your awkward phrasing and raise you unintelligibility on Ooh. my story. Is unintelligibility a word even? That's pretty impressive. Can you just add prefixes and suffixes at random if you like? If your last name is Whedon, you can. Yeah? So you could say like, irregardless if you wanted to. <laughs> oh, no, no, that, that one you can't. But in that story that I sent to Dave, uh, I used the word irreverentiate, <laughs> which is not a real word, but by God it should be. <laughs> All right. So I thought we could, as uh, our topic for today, talk about death. Yes. Of course. And not necessarily can. the act of dying or the. The little death? The subject of dying or whatever, but the person, death, the personification, the. What, what did they say in that one story that we did? The uh, personification of abstract concepts, I think it was. <laughs> That anyway. was Death and Michelle Jenkins? Yes, yes. Good old Muncie Muncie. Muncie wrote that? Yes, Munzie. Funzie. Rhymes with funzie. Oh, see, which, of course, is also not a word, so that doesn't really help. But thanks, Munzie. <laughs> if it rhymed with Fonzie, it would be <laughs> yeah, easier to remember. Go. Does the personification of death scare you? <sighs> I, I don't think so. I, 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 In a way... I don't know. There's something fascinating about that, about the Grim Reaper to me. Uh -huh. I mean, we've seen him represented in countless movies or cartoons or comic books or whatever it is to the point where it's a familiar fantasy figure to mm -hmm. me now. Uh, familiar in a positive way. I mean, I just, I, I love it. And I, right. I have, you know, a Grim Reaper costume. And, and the Yeah, Lord. I think it was this time last year where you showed up to podcast in your Grim Reaper costume. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Don't you recall? It was the podcast that dare not speak its name. And why was I? I think you just had come straight from a, like a Halloween party or something oh, like that. And you showed up here in your outfit. And so I made you put it back on and took a picture <laughs> and sent it out to the folks. I, yeah, I'm not afraid of the Reaper. Uh, <laughs> you don't fear him? But... It, to me, it's not... We can be like they are. Come on, baby. <laughs> it's not linked to actual death to me. Uh -huh. It's like a fantasy character to me. You know, right. it's, a, it's a... It's like an anthropomorphic personification of... Uh, stop it. Abstract well, no, See, I don't know where the, that image of the angel of death came from. Uh -huh. I remember I would talk to people that would call it... Uh, El Santo de la Muerte. It was a, it was the saint, you know, of death. And maybe in Catholic culture, there was, there were at one point an actual belief in a personification and all that. But I don't, I don't know. I, I've never known where that came from. In the old days, old like older than us, you would see representations of him in cemeteries and on plots and all that stuff. But now it's all just for Halloween. Right. And, and nobody puts that kind of stuff on real graves anymore. I mean, now if if, if there is something, it's going to be a cherub or it's going to be an angel or you right. know, things like that. Or People something. don't want to go to visit the grave of their loved one and think of them burning in hell. Instead, they prefer <laughs> to think of them perhaps plucking a harp in heaven. Deluded mortals. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to burn in hell. Well, okay, you've asked me and I've I've mumbled on and on. How about you? Is does the reaper frighten you? The seasons don't fear the reaper. <laughs> Nor, Nor do, do the, the sun, the moon and the, and the stars. And... We can be like they are. Romeo and Juliet are, are together, together in, in eternity. eternity. <laughs> oh, let me interrupt. 
Words cannot express how much I love that song. Yeah. And it's I, a good I don't song. know if I've explained that to you, but I mean, it's like, that is one of my five favorite songs of all yeah. time. I, I love that song. And it wasn't until I realized what they were singing about that I truly embraced it. I mean, there was always something kind of ominous about it. And I, it's been used in like Halloween and The Stand and sort you know, scary movies and that. So I had associated it with scariness. But then when I listened to what they were saying, I was just like, oh my gosh, that this song was ever popular just makes my day. <laughs> the real question I have for you though, was, was there enough cowbell in that song for you? Uh, it's, it, maybe it's inextricably linked to that sketch now. <laughs> but see, I loved the song before then. And yeah. so when people only know it as the cowbell sketch song, I... Yeah, I knew it years and years. You know, I I, I would, I probably knew it years and years before you, I'm yeah, guessing. Cause because I was not raised on classic rock. Yeah, I listened to 93 Rock from age 12 or 13 on. And uh, yeah, they would play that song at least once a week or probably more. So yeah, I loved it from way back when. But yeah, death, the personification of the abstract concept, doesn't really scare me. That I mean, there have been times where they've made him scary in films and things like that. For example? I'm trying to think of one. I, 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 I can see it in my head, like this one where they had death just... He had wings, for one, and he was like flying and carrying his thing, and he was like, Rah! like screaming. Huh. And chasing somebody, but I can't think of right. what. Could it have been Frighteners? He didn't have wings in that, but I, I just. I, that was a cool movie. I remember that seeing that in really, college. Really, really good movie. Um, and it had Michael J. Fox in it, which is cool. But uh, I can't remember what the movie was. It had to have been a fairly recent one, though, because that would have required a lot of computer graphics, I would think, to do that bit. But uh, yeah, it's not coming to mind. But I'm sure if you know, you can mention in the, the, the sure the notes. Um, but yeah, it's never really scared me all that much. The idea I, I've this is not my first story, my first drabble even <laughs> that I've written about death. I had a drabble that appeared on the Drabblecast under a pseudonym. Really, that was also about death. The, the idea, the concept of it, is really interesting to me. There was a a book that I read, and I used to read, and I've said before a lot of Piers Anthony or Piers Xanthony, because he wrote the Xanth books. Um, I used to read a lot of his novels, and he had a series. On a, on a Pale Horse? What was it called? Yes, On a Pale Horse was the, uh, the book that I'm talking about. He had a series called The Incarnations of Immortality. It's funny because we did a, a film in, in college, which was actually a parody of the Santa Claus, because in Santa Claus, Santa dies, and the person who killed him has to take up the mantle and become the new Santa. Right. Um, and so we did the Satan Claus and did a parody of that. But he did a book called For the Love of Evil in this series, which was about someone who had to take up Satan's job. Because oh. basically what happens, and On a Pale Horse is the first, I think, of this series. And all these incarnations of immortality are out there. There is God and the devil who are like the above the regular incarnations. And then there's Mother Earth or nature, I guess, is what she might go as. And there's death. And there's, I'm trying to think of what are the other ones. L love? Uh, probably. The La Chera, or Valentine. Yeah, or like a Cupid, perhaps, something like I'm trying to remember what they all are. I ought to be able to remember a few more than just two. Old Man Winter. Uh, time. There's a time one. And all those kind of deities that are in the past. And the first one was this on a pale horse where this guy wants to kill himself. He has the gun pointed at his head. And he's about to shoot himself, and then suddenly the door opens, and Death walks in to collect his soul. He looks up, sees Death, points the gun at him, and shoots Death. And because Death doesn't have his hood up, he is in his human form, and he isn't protected from stuff like this, which he normally would be if he was in his immortality form. And so Death gets killed. And suddenly this guy who was about to kill himself now has to take up the mantle of death. And it goes through, and it's an it's an unusual world. It's set in like today's world, but not today's world. It's a world where they have magic and science and it's all kind of mixed together and stuff that goes along with that. But it was an interesting book. And uh, 
there's been a lot of other films like that. Like I remember in, in neither you nor I really like this film, but there was the oh, <laughs> Meet Joe Black, which is in which death was played by Brad Pitt. Which was a remake of Death Takes a Holiday. Yeah. I don't think Death Take a Ho- Takes a Holiday had the world's most uncomfortable sex scene in it, but Meet Joe Black did. But yeah, I mean, like Death's been played by Brad Pitt. He's in Marvel Comics. He's a woman. Death is a woman, right? Played by a drawing, not played by anyone. Um, played by a drawing. <laughs> but yeah, death is just like it's it's one of those concepts that seems to have grown beyond just the simple ghost of Christmas future kind of looking guy. And then that's kind of what I went with here with my little story where death is he's a guy. But when he pulls his hood on, then he becomes death and you, he looks like death and all that. Neil Gaiman's got the death as a, a young girl goth with mm-hmm. white skin and black hair and dresses, you know, with the she's got an onk and stuff around her neck. That's that's his incarnation of death. What was the god of death in Egyptian? Was it Anubis? Okay. Can't remember well, you just mentioned the onk. It made me think. I wonder I can't remember who it was, but in uh American gods they had I believe Anubis and a couple of other of the uh, Egyptian gods that worked in like a funeral home or whatever, mm. embalming people, putting their brains in jars, I guess, like they used to do. <laughs> jars? I think we talked about this for a second before. Oh, that was when I was directing you on how to read the story. There was that f- fairly popular, especially among nerds like you and I, that show uh, Dead Like Me with Mandy Patinkin. Was it really popular? Well, it's fairly well, it had popular two seasons for a movie, didn't it? Right, there you go. That's the, uh, oh no, it's six, seven seasons, six seasons in a movie. What's the uh, <laughs> measure of success by Abed They standards? own their own home. A fairly popular show as far as, it's probably done way better than any other show that Brian Fuller's created. They all seem to go a year and a half or less. Didn't he do the show that your wife got canceled? Yes, that one was a year and a half. How, what's it got that called? Uh, Pushing Daisies. Pushing Daisies. I want to say Wonderfalls. I don't know why. Wonderfalls was another one of his shows that went even less. I think it only went six uh, months, one half season. Made the list right there with uh, Firefly as the shortest run series that people seem to still enjoy. Okay, and in that, there was a, a sort of a team of Grim Reapers. Right. And this girl who dies embarrassingly uh, (laughs) is charged with being a reaper. Right. And it was almost a comedy, almost a drama. It it, it never strayed really far in either direction, far enough in either direction for you to say, that's what it is. Right. Yeah. It was weird. I, I finally gave up the show because it was too much of a drama and it was too depressing for me. There was comedy moments in many ways, but yeah, it was just depressing and, oh, let's dwell on how depressing and how crappy. Oh, let's make sure we keep going back to visit the family of the girl who died and just see how shitty their life is now because it just gets a little shittier every week. And let's just keep seeing just how bad it can get, okay? That was the thing that finally made me go, you know what, I, I, I'm i done. And my wife continued to watch it, I think, all the way through and saw the movie and was like, what the hell? This movie sucked. It didn't even have Manny Patinkin in it. Um, <laughs> it's funny, I, I and this can be off the air. This, Jewel State was in one of the episodes of, uh-huh. of Wonderfalls. Do you remember? Of Wonderfalls? Fuck. <laughs> she was in all the episodes of Wonderfalls. What was she, the, the one episode of dead like me she you know was, who else was in one of those episodes of dead like me was the girl that played on Battlestar galactica the chief uh, chick that had you remember the chief mechanic guy or whatever his name i don't remember what his name was i just remember they called him chief or whatever all the time but he finally got he wanted to get with somebody and he never could and so he just callie i want to say was her name okay she was like the babysitter in just like a random episode <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, I mean, those shows that they shot in Canada are going to have the same people. Right, over the same and over Vancouver over actors like, every time. It's like London. I mean, only at Low London is going to be bigger. But, you know, I mean, the, the group to pull from when you're there is, is, is really small. Right. That's a, it's, there's just lots of different takes on death, which I think is really cool. It's one of those concepts that lends itself to that kind of a thing where you can just make it interesting you can make a team of people out there collecting souls or death is just like this 
force that just kind of oversees the idea of death in that well i probably shouldn't spoil that uh, i won't spoil i was gonna say in that Piers anthony novel death does this but i won't say what he does because i always remember him from monty python's the meaning of life where he comes and what was it that they had eaten the, it was some remember. kind of fish I've seen it in a really long time i'm afraid but death comes and he knocks on the door and they invite him in and <laughs> and he's there to collect their souls and, and and they're all kind of obtuse they don't seem to realize even though he's the skeletal version and they've actually got like skeleton hands and puppetry and stuff like that they don't seem to realize that this is something to be feared and, and then it takes them all away uh, what was it the, what kind of fish was it halibut an halibut eric the halibut are all your pets Sorry. called eric I don't know what kind it was, but for for the joke to work, you have to know what the, you know, to say it was the the halibut, because you know they, he he takes them all, they've all died, and then the woman says, "But I didn't have any in the halibut. <laughs> She's already been taken." <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, and then there, and there's of course one of the more famous portrayals of death is one from the Seventh Seal, the Ingmar Bergman film, where he comes and he plays chess with death, and then. In the end, he takes them all away, and they have that little shot where, and you see that I think it's on the poster or whatever, where Death is there and he's kind of leading them all by the hand. Really cool looking shot. And how many hundreds of times has that one been parodied or alluded to or whatever in films since then? In the, the second Bill and Ted movie, I mean, yeah. that was a big part of that whole yeah. movie of the ad campaign, the poster. William Sadler, I believe, played the Reaper in that. You remember the. They, they had to have some kind of password or when they asked him what they had learned in life or whatever. And, and you remember he quotes a, a particular song. Which song do they, I don't, I remember the ones they quoted in the first movie, but not the bogus journey. Oh, he, he goes, he, something like, just like every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Every rose has, every its, rose has its thorn. And they're they like, used, very well, you may enter. I think they used that one in the first movie though. Oh, well, you're wrong. Song lyrics, man. Quote them some lyrics. We're just treading water now. Pretty much, yeah. This was supposed to be a short one. But uh, yeah, I, I so like... So you don't fear the Reaper. I don't. Summation. But you do fear death. I do fear death. The actual act of dying and being dead and not being around anymore. But that can be subject for another day. No, we're finishing it. Do you think <laughs> giving him a persona... Giving him a Melvin? Oh, sorry. We're, we're off of that subject, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you think that do you think that anthropomorphizing him uh, <laughs> that is an actual word unlike was a way substitutionary locomotive what was it that you used remuneration that? was not a word no, even yeah. though it looks more like a word than remuneration yes that's true what was the word that you made up for your story you said the other day irreverentiate irreverentiate there you go no that is a word now Ah, good. You know, like 800 words Shakespeare made up that we use every day. Well, that I use every day. You just (laughs) grunt. Irreverentiate is a word now. But do you think creating a persona around this thing, this concept, this inevitability was a way of people's coming to terms with it, a way of accepting it, a way of humanizing it? Probably. Probably uh, the general idea behind it. It was a way for people to be able to deal with it or something like that. Because we have to do these a little bit in advance, we can't really address people's comments at this point. you know. But feel free to comment on your thoughts of death or, or favorite images of death, and, and we'll just let them sit there. In fact, we'll just moderate them all away. Yeah. I don't we'll know just, why I'm mentioning this. We'll just mark them as spam. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening, folks, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this oh, okay. well, it, it, special treat. If the doorbell rang and we went to the door and that were at the door, I would fear it. I would agree. Because it is, it's kind of ghastly. It's kind of horrifying. But it's what it means. I mean, why is it there? Yeah. It's like the death and Michelle Jenkins story we did where it's like, oh, he's here just to go on a date with our daughter. Oh, no, he's here to collect her soul. And she's dead upstairs in the bathtub. I spoiled that story, by the way. Hopefully you've already heard it. A bummer that. 
if death is there, that's why death comes. And so if we knock the door, I would hope he was at least there for you and not me. <laughs> that's loving. <laughs> Could could be here for the cat. Is there a cat death? Gosh, I hope so. There was a scratch at the door and we opened it and there was a little cat, a skeletal cat with black fur that came in. How could it be and, skeletal and have black fur? Well, it's really thin. It's oh, emaciated okay. and I don't know. It has a hood, okay? <laughs> so do you suppose it comes to the door and, you know, it sees the cat and it goes, that's two, and then it goes away. <laughs> You know, three months later, there it's back go. again. It keeps coming back. All right, you've made it to seven. You better watch yourself. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, folks. We'll see you again tomorrow. Unfortunately, yes. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That'll teach you. Seasons don't fear the reaper Under the, the sun and the sun and the rain so Come on, baby Wait, I blew it. I've, I got it wrong. Well, the title, Date Night, did it come to you before you wrote the story? At, or did, or did you wrestle with it? Oh, what do I call it? Or did you just go, oh, Date Night. That's, that's, that's the title. Yeah, I thought of various titles Quotes that were probably story. more fitting, but I didn't want to give it away. So I just went with date night. What do you think of date night? It's not bad. It's not amazing, but it aptly describes the majority of the story. It gives you an idea of what's to come, sort of. You could expand this story quite a bit. You know, just start with him sitting her down at the restaurant or picking her up at the night and just going through the date and all that, leading to, you know, dropping hints of what he is. If you wanted to, or do you disagree? You could. I don't know if it's worth it to do that. Oh, I ought to stop recording, huh? <laughs> oh, no, no. I figured we uh, save this as outtakes. Still talking about it. You don't think it would work as well longer? Yeah, it's one of those things where, I mean, and I, I was the same way with your texting from the grave story, where I was like, that's awesome. Make it a better, awesomer, longer, cooler story. And you're like, stupid joke. And, but uh, when I expanded it, did it hold up as well? Was it better? Was it worse? I thought it was good. But I mean, I only I liked it. Like tripled the size. I didn't. Right. Didn't turn it into a novel. but Well, uh, no, but it's it was always a short story idea. And you can only expand a short story mm -hmm. before it ceases to be short. Right. Maybe you have to have more than a, one idea for something. I, I don't but yeah, know see, in my mind, this is just a joke. It's right. just don't fear the reaper. <laughs> okay, so it's essentially a drab. My definition it's, of a drabble yeah, is it's, just, it's just a joke. It's taking that come on, come on, baby, and changing it to come on, baby. Don't fear the reaper. That's all it is. And it's just describing that this the, the reaper has gone on a date and the woman has seen his real face and now she's afraid of him. And he's like, oh, come on, baby. Don't fear the reaper. That's all it is. So I, I, I don't see expanding it myself. Okay. I just say uh, these things are interesting to me and you so seldom write a story. <laughs> that shall change starting now. I will write again tomorrow. <laughs>